Welcome to the Fantasy Source Baseball Podcast. My name is David A.R. and I'm sitting here with Matt Lutovsky. And today we are previewing the starting pitchers in the world of fantasy baseball. Uh, Matt, we recently did our uh, mock draft, our most recent Fantasy Source mock draft. It'll be posted up on the site eventually. Uh, some fascinating things, I think, from my point of view at least. Nobody, no starting pitchers were picked in the first 18 picks of the draft and then I ended up picking Felix Hernandez with the 19th pick overall. And he was the first starting pitcher taken. Yeah, no, it is interesting because coming off of last year where there were so many good pitching performances, we heard year of the pitcher over and over, and it actually was. I mean, you look at the number, best ERA, league-wide ERA. Runs through the floor. Yeah, best league-wide ERA since 92. There was 15 starters last year with an ERA under three, the most since 92. And so when you look at the guys this year, you're, you know, you're, you're going over your draft preparation, you're looking at the names, and you think, wow, there's a lot of good good pitchers. And, and what that does is it has the effect, almost the opposite of what you might think at first blush, where I can wait for my ace. I can get a legitimate ace in the fifth or sixth round as my SP1, so why would I draft a guy in the first 15 picks or, or even the first 30 picks? I mean, now, the math behind it right. is actually a little bit, it's, it's very complicated. I mean, like, I have a hard time wrapping my head around it. Right. And one of the things that we talk about a lot in fantasy football and that you kind of, you don't really take as much into account in baseball is that for starting pitchers specifically, it's really about as uh, how good they are in relation to other starting pitchers. Right. Because, you know, for the hitters, they're all doing the same stats, you know, and, like, you're required to have certain positions, but it's not quite as pronounced an effect as it is with the pitchers as it is in fantasy football. Right. So, in, in a certain sense, you might be able to argue that, as you say, and I, as I do agree with you, right. that the more good starting pitching there is out there, the more guys that are having sub-3 ERAs, or even for that matter sub-3.5 ERAs and more than 200 strikeouts, the longer you can wait. Because if, if the difference between Felix Hernandez and then let's look down the list to Zach Grinke, right. who is taking the 11th pick of round four, well... How big of a difference is that really going to be? And, and so if you take a guy in the 7th pick of round 2 or the 11th pick of round 4 and the difference isn't all that great, may as well wait for the round 4 pick. Right. No, I mean, and that's the way to look at it. And I think when you look down this list, I remember during the draft, and by the way, the draft is up now on Fantasy Source. Okay. We'll have a column about it tomorrow, uh, kind of breaking down some of the picks. But I... I remember during the draft thinking, why hasn't Ubaldo Jimenez been drafted yet? Mm -hmm. And he wound up being, what does it look like here, the 13th starter off the board? And that's, that's crazy to me. Because yes. like, he was so amazingly good. Right. And the, but the funny thing is, then you look at the guys ahead of him, it's like, well, who do you argue with? Verlander, Sabathia, Granke, Lester, Price, Josh Johnson, Cliff Lee. And then, you know, the elite guys like Hernandez, Halliday, Lincecum, and then Kershaw Wainwright. Tough to say he should be ahead of any of those guys. And, in fact, you could probably argue that Matt Latos, who was picked after him, maybe Francisco Liriano, who was picked after him, should have been ahead of him too. So it, it really is deep. And it's not just deep, top-heavy deep. It's deep all the way through. I mean, we're sitting here in the 20th, 21st round, and there's still legitimately – like, Brett Cecil didn't even get drafted. Right. And now our draft is only 23 rounds. We have no bench spots. But Brett Cecil is a very good young pitcher. He didn't get drafted. I think Gavin Floyd went in the last round or second. Travis Wood, I think, went in the last round. A very good young pitcher with a lot of upside. These guys are fringe draft picks. You know, obviously when there's a bench, they won't be. But that's crazy. That tells you how deep this position is. Yeah, uh, one of the things that, that that conversation sparked in my mind that we had before the show has to do with uh, I believe Ron Chandler is the one who came up with the Lima plan, mm -hmm. which has to do with basically saying, like, look, I'm just going to draft the best hitters I can and scrap for pitchers. Right. Uh, it doesn't Stream really up. matter. I'm just going to yeah. go for uh, the, the low-end dumpster dive for pitchers and see. And you know what? I can trust that either at the end of the draft or during the course of the season, I'll get a competent pitching staff and cobble it together. Well, if in your lead you determine, you know what? I think that down in rounds 20 to 25, 26, whatever it is, I'm going to be getting reasonably the same number of uh, quality of pitchers that I would be getting in 10 to 20. Why not go for it? Right. Just wait. I mean, I think you know, Jeff Neiman, I don't think, was oh, taken. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Wade Davis, two young guys on the Rays that people loved, both of them last year, now are afterthoughts. You know, And there's, there's plenty more guys like that. 
you know, a guy like I really like, Anibal Sanchez, I'm not sure if he was drafted in our no, draft. I don't know. And he's a very good young pitcher, great second half. He's not that young, but great second half, good player. So it's very deep. There's a lot of good ones. And I think, though, that beyond the guys at the end, because they could go in any order and you just don't know how, how they're going to go, the guys at the front, I think people are really focused on how do I determine between, you know, differentiate between Kershaw and Cliff Lee. Well, well how do you? That, what's, what's your, what, right. what are your rules of thumb? I mean, for me, you know, I always go, especially in the league we play in, it, is it has an innings limit. I mean, high K per nine is just a must. Mm-hmm. It just is. I mean, that that's the most important thing to me. Um, I mean, not the most important. Otherwise, Brandon Morrow would right. be the first pitcher taken. <laughs> but you know, I mean, in, in context, obviously. So that that's why, to me, like in our draft, Kershaw was the fourth pitcher taken before Wainwright, and I would have taken Wainwright ahead of him. But I can't really argue with that because Kershaw is fantastic. He's what twenty two, twenty three, mm-hmm. one of the best K per nine guys is out. That's out there. That's great. But uh, so I look at K for nine first, and then I'll look at WHIP. I mean, I don't mess around with wins. I don't chase wins. They're just too fluky. They, you know, yeah, you consider it a little bit. Like for instance, you took Felix one. Right. I'd have taken Halliday with the with the deciding factor being wins. I think Halliday has a, a little more likely to get wins, but that's no guarantee. Well, if, if I can if I can explain that, I took yeah. I took Hernandez specifically because I love strikeouts right. more than anything else with a pitcher. I mean, like. I, when I have a cheat sheet, I, will, I am almost certain to just do my projections, sort it by the number of strikeouts right. per inning, strikeouts per nine a guy's going to get, make sure, like, have a minimum number of innings I expect him to get, and pretty much go from there, and then kind of eyeball it based on everything else. I, I believe right. in strikeouts that much, and that's basically where my bias comes in when I pick Felix. And you know what? How how bad is Seattle really going to be? Considering they had a historically bad offense. Oh, last absolutely. Year. They're going to bounce back a little bit. And then you know what? Is it really blasphemous to say that Felix is going to have essentially a Tim Lincecum circa two thousand eight type of season? No. I mean, it's... like that's that's kind of where his baseline is. Whereas Holiday, like I can imagine him having a year where he strikes out one hundred fifty guys. Maybe he only wants ten. Right. You know, but as he's r- ridiculously bound to do at some point. But at a certain point, you know what, like, how low can his ERA get? How many wins can he possibly get? Felix is going to be close to that. Oh, no, I, I mean, I agree. I mean, we have him one, two. I think they're, they're neck and neck. And I do think people go overboard in, you know, projecting few, too few right, wins right. for guys. I think people go, I mean, look, Cole Hamels was on the same team as Roy Halladay mm-hmm. last year, and he won 12 games, I believe. And he pitched very well. So... You know, don't chase wins. Don't let that be a huge factor in the way you draft and the way you look at certain players. I think that I think that's real important too. I mean, look at ERA, look at you know, look at WHIP, look at K's, and then obviously you want to look at advanced stats. Well, I guess that the that's I, big too. I, I guess that it's really much more important when you get down to those lower levels, and right. you want to take and maybe you want to give more of a chance, take more of a chance on a guy like Brandon Morrow, who you mentioned, right. who's not really. I mean. He had a four four nine ERA last year, I think it was, which is not amazing by any stretch of the right. imagination, especially in fantasy. But those strikeouts, yeah. I mean, he just he's just unhittable. Yeah, when he's on, he's I mean, he's fantastic, and he'll do so much for your team with the K's. But there's a I mean, there's a lot of guys who are good, uh, you know, who felt like Tim Hudson and Trevor Cahill both had great stats last year. Uh, don't strike a lot of guys out. That's why they fell. But also their advanced stats. You look at their mm-hmm. FIP. Not good. Now, Tim Hudson throughout his career has routinely outperformed his FIP in terms of his ERA. We can reasonably assume, hey, this guy's a good enough pitcher. He's gonna. It's not going to just really fall off a cliff. Trevor Cahill, we don't know. I mean, he's got to do it again and right. again in order to And that's why a guy like him falls. But you got other players, a lot of those good mid-round guys. Oddly enough, they're all on the A's. Every single pitcher <laughs> drafted in the mid-round. Gonzalez, Brett Anderson. And they're great, and that, again, this position is very deep, and you can find great players like that all the way through. All right, Matt. Thanks for joining us talking about starting pitching. Yep.